Okay, uh, here we are uh, with a couple of machines here to look at. We've got this Kenmore. Pretty nice machine, good design, reliable. And uh, so the complaint was that it wasn't agitating very well. It wasn't clean and closed very well. So basically this agitator here is supposed to ratchet. It's supposed to grab when you turn it. It'll go this way freely, but when you go this way, the whole agitator should uh, turn. So what we find out is that, let's see if we can sort of zoom in there. You can see inside there that it's supposed to have dogs that, are, that will grab the side of the agitator. And those dogs have disintegrated. They grab the agitator. So this uh, 716 bolt will have to come out, this centerpiece will have to come out, and then the dogs will uh, have to go inside underneath this. And so that would uh, fix that problem. And so let's look at uh, the bottom of it. And so the bottom just to check a few things here now commonly this spring here will give out it'll rust right at that point there and then break and then cause the whole barrel to be off balance when you run a load um, sometimes it can actually if you move them uh, this here this plate the slide plate will actually uh, uh, come sort of disengaged from where it's supposed to be in between these three bolts. Now uh, the water pump here looks good. Uh, it's spinning freely. I can spin the water pump by uh, spinning the uh, the drive coupler down here. Where is that thing? <laughs> so yeah, the drive coupler right there. Yeah. So it's spinning freely, and you can see on the water pump that there's no mineral trail, there's no uh, drips or anything, uh, so that's a good water pump. So this is a good machine other than uh, just the agitator dogs need to be replaced. Now we also have a Maytag here, sort of a classic Maytag. Um, this is a pretty good design. They uh, built this pretty heavy duty, and uh, but the only sort of weak point in, the, in this, and it's and it's like the drive coupler. The drive coupler on these is what the way I see it is supposed to be a fuse in the system. Rather than breaking the uh, transmission, it breaks the drive coupler, and so it's the same with these. These have these blowers in them that have a spline shaft in the center. You can see part of it is splined or it has a, it's sort of a half moon shape. And what happens is over time lint will build up inside here and this particular one uh, did have a little bit of lint build up. Sometimes maybe if you get a sock that goes down there, something goes down there uh, into the lint uh, thing, then it would get clogged up inside there, and then it would clog that up and then spin the uh, spin the spline off. This someone's already repaired this. You can see, and I've actually done this before in a pinch. And you can repair these sometimes uh, with epoxy and a, and a good clamp, but uh, it, it's a lot of work sometimes to have to do that. And if you have to come back, you know you didn't repair it right in the first place. But uh, I've repaired these with uh, JB Weld and a good clamp and had them work for quite a while. So this one is, uh, of course, an elect electric dryer. And many of these components can be tested with a, a an ohm meter. And you can see this one here does have quite a bit of lint built up in it, uh, which could have been the, the, the reason why that 
blower went. There's too much lint. And then the skids on it, these are Teflon or nylon style skids that the tub uh, or the basket rolls on. And so these are starting to go out. You can see those should be replaced. They've got, uh, what happens normally when those go out, you start to hear sort of a, a grind or a squeak. Now, this heating element, like I said, can be tested with a, uh, a voltmeter. And many of you guys have already seen this kind of stuff on YouTube before, but this actually has a thermostat in there. And then uh, you should have continuity here on the two uh, sides of the heating element. And you should also have continuity on that thermostat too. And then again on this one here, you should have continuity between here and here. And so, yeah, these, these actually have kind of a tricky belt system. So you might want to take the back panel off on this. So we don't have a lot of lint built up in there. That's good. So... You always want to check that too because uh, those things can be a fire hazard and uh, cause cause uh, cause lint to uh, kind of uh, make it uh, not heat very well. So this has a back panel. So you might want to take. I what I always do is I always take and take this back panel off. Notice how the belt is hooked on there and then draw a little uh, diagram of the belt on the back of the machine so I can always remember. And so just in case, uh, so that's your, uh, that's your big bag of Kenmore tip for today. And so I hope you enjoyed it. And so signing out from Northern California.